the logical starting place whenever you're using a brand new application is to go through the whole setup process. And this is not how I do it. Especially for a product like 17 Hats, I think it's important first and foremost to have a specific use case in mind. Some specific project that you're going to have that you're going to want to set up 17 Hats for. In this course, I'm going to use the onboarding process of a client in a bookkeeping engagement as my example. Once you have that specific context, then it starts to become more clear what needs to get set up, when, where, and how. So let's take a look and see what the setup process looks like in 17 hats. 17 hats. I know sometimes it feels like we're wearing at least that many, perhaps more in some cases. When you get into 17 hats and you first sign in, you're going to see an overview. And until you start really adding information, you won't see much here. I've already got my uh, calendar connected to 17 hats. This is my Google calendar. So, of course, on the overview, you're starting to immediately see what's on my calendar for the next three days, including today. Um, it is a two-way sync, which is nice. This way I can add things to either side, and it will sync up, and I have it in both places. It's uh, important because I don't want to double book things in case I'm looking at the wrong calendar. So two-way sync is important. I've seen too many apps like this where the sync is just one way. And then I have to make sure I'm looking at the calendar that's got truly everything on it before I book something. So, nice to know. I can add an appointment from here, and it'll show up on my Google Calendar. Now, the first thing I like to do, uh, a, lot of, a lot of you are going to think the first thing to do when getting into an app is just set it up. Let's just go through some sequential process. And I hate doing that because I'm usually anxious and I want to get right in and kind of figure out what this thing does and how to do it, right? So, you know, you probably get that 17 hats is project management, and it is, but it's more than that. It's workflow management, right? So you're going to create projects, but the whole key to this, as you're going to see, is really the uh, templates that you create and the workflows so that you can create a sequence of events that have to take place from the time you, let's say, first meet a contact and they're just a lead to the time that they become a client because they've agreed to hire you for something. And once they've agreed to hire you for something, you probably want to send them out a contract, right? And then once they've signed that contract, then you might want to send them some kind of a welcome or onboarding letter as I do, to let them know, okay, here are the next steps. Here's what has to happen next. Here's what I need from you in order to move forward. And what 17 Hats does really well is it eliminates all the sort of manual heavy lifting in terms of accomplishing all that. It'll follow the tasks in sequence, and as things happen, it will kind of send out the next message or do the next thing for us. So it minimizes the time we have to spend figuring out, wait, where are we at? Did we send that welcome letter? Did they, you know, did they get it? Did they add us as a user in QuickBooks Online? That kind of thing. And we're going to use my Nerd Enterprises onboarding process, which is based on this letter here that without 17 hats, I've been sending out to new bookkeeping clients as they come in. So you'll see, for example, here it asks them to fill out my contact form. Uh, well, throughout this course, one of the, this is one of the things we're going to change. We're going to actually do it in the form of a questionnaire in 17 hats. So in this first lesson, I just want to give you kind of a high-level overview. So you've now seen leads. Of course, once the lead becomes a client, they go into contacts. And you'll see I've got two. I've got my company, Nerd Enterprises, as a contact. And of course, we have Jack Hammer. Who doesn't, have, who doesn't work with Jack Hammer, right? Over here, we have projects. Now, what you're going to find out is the project is always linked to a contact. So if I click on this, it's going to redirect me right back over to the contacts. And specifically, um, well, within that contact, where this project is, right? So it's the uh, Nerd Enterprises Inc. onboarding. So going back over here, you'll see, and I actually created a generic project called Training Videos, and then I put in a workflow that I was playing around with. Uh, called Workflow VA Onboarding. It's just me playing around. There's no rhyme or reason to most of this. Uh, here, of course, is where you can access the calendar. In the overview, you got a, uh, you know, just that, an overview of the calendar. But here is where you can actually access the calendar, and uh, I can add new appointments and so on and so forth. So that's always nice. Um, so you just click on the calendar, and you can add an event. Uh, here we have to-dos, right? Now, if you notice in the overview, if we go back here, it shows me to-dos that are sort of upcoming. Like it says I have one to-do item. It also says I have 1,109 transactions to categorize because it has a bookkeeping feature. And I've connected my bank feed to it so that I could, if I wanted to, do the bookkeeping right here in 17 hats. Um, and then if I click on the to-do item, it shows me here October 20th, send onboarding doc to client in the one-on-one -on -one training videos project. 
Um, so it's nice. It shows me what I, when I log in, I have kind of my dossier of what I need to do today. And if I had many projects, it would be sort of across all projects. Right, and then, uh, let's go to invoices real quick. This is nice. If I want to create a uh, new invoice, I'll create my first invoice. Sure, why not? It has to be related to a project, of course. Continue. And you'll see you can add payment gateways so you can actually capture payments. You can handle almost the entire sort of revenue cycle right here in 17 hats. Notice you can do recurring invoices. And what's really so, of course, I'll say send every month. Let's say I'm doing monthly invoicing for a bookkeeping client, right? Um, so I can select an invoice uh, template. Uh, you've received an invoice. Uh, never ends, so it's going to send it every month, right, until I go in and end it. And what's nice is you can also define a payment schedule. So, you know, if you have, let's say, like, a, you know, I think of a construction project, of course, is the most common example of that, where you're going to have a contract amount. Let's say the project is going to be for $150,000, and they're going to pay 25% up front, and then you do the progress billing, so they're going to have a payment schedule where they're going to pay f the project off in pieces, and then the last thing is the, the retention that they have to pay you based on taking 10% off of each invoice so that your client can make sure that you've completed your last punch list before paying you in full. So invoices, uh, workflow, again, is where I started to go. And this will show you recently active workflows. So I can click in here. Notice this is an overview. I can go to active workflow. So this shows you workflows that have been initiated that are going on. And here are the templates. And so throughout this course, what we're going to do is we're going to create the templates that we need uh, in terms of emails that go out or questionnaires and things like that. And then we're going to build the workflow for my onboarding process where we're going to use some of those templates. So the templates are here so I can edit. So I have the bookkeeping client onboarding here. I've already set up the template. Now, one of the great things about, and by the way, I've set up the template as sort of a skeleton. There's nothing in here yet, as you can see. But one of the great things about 17 hats, especially for those of you who are new to it, is that you can get in here and play around and start adding sort of sample or dummy information just to play around without having to worry about creating all kinds of work for yourself later in terms of wanting to, um, you know, remove everything so you can start over with real data. Uh, if we just go over here to my account and go to account settings, then all the way at the bottom here is reset. And we're going to do this now because I want you to see what this all looks like. 17 Hats, as you're going to start finding out, is a very robust application. It does a lot of things. And there are a lot of little moving parts that can be set up so that they can all be brought together to work well. So one of the things you're going to want to be aware of when it comes to using 17 Hats, especially when you're just getting started with it, is that it has a reset option. The reason this is important and actually very powerful is it enables you to go in there and play, so to speak, create dummy data, sample data, play around, get comfortable with how the application works, and then when you're ready to set up a real project in 17 Hats, or to be specific, a real workflow, then you have the reset option, which you're going to see here, that will enable you to completely remove everything and start all over. The concern here is that otherwise you might have to manually remove everything that you've created piece by piece. The reset option that 17 Hats has provided makes it so that in one click you can get rid of all of it or any one component depending on what you've set up and what you might want to get rid of to make way for the real data once you're ready to get started actually using the product. So now, over here, reset, I can reset contacts, I can reset projects. So I'm going to say, yeah, delete all projects. And it warns you it can't be undone. Uh, I didn't actually create an invoice. Uh, I don't want to delete all calendars because my calendar is properly linked up and that's what I want. Let's delete all to-dos. I don't think I have any questionnaires, but just in case, I'll say delete all questionnaires. And of course, down here, by the way, you could say reset everything, but for reasons you've already seen, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, I can delete all bookkeeping. I'm going to leave it in there because I may want to show you as a sample. I'll just have to blur out because it is my actual banking information in there. We'll delete all time tracking. What would be cool is if I could actually use checkboxes and just say reset these things so I could do it all at once. Um, boom, boom, boom. Did I say delete all questionnaires? Let's do it again just in case and uh, delete all workflows. Let's do it. And delete all time tracking. Beautiful. So now if I go to the overview, there should be basically nothing other than my calendar. Right? I, again, left the bookkeeping in there. So that's the beauty of this. Is you can get in and play around, and then you can just delete everything and start all over if you need to. So 
get in there, play around with 17 hats, go in and create a project and create a to-do and start playing around with workflows. Of course, in the next lesson, we're going to start looking at outlining the workflow, and you're going to see why I think this is really important before you even get into 17 hats. I mean, get in and play around. Don't wait. But when you start getting ready to create a real project with a real workflow, you're gonna, I'm going to explain in the next lesson, for starters, why I think it's important to outline your workflow outside of 17 hats before you start trying to create stuff in 17 hats. And I'm going to show you exactly why, of course. As always, if you are ready, move on to the next lesson. If not, review, play, pause, do what you need to, take notes. Make sure you understand what I've just gone over. Make sure you've got a 17 hats account. You know, they give you like a 30-day free trial so you can play around in it during that 30 days. Then, then of course, sign up and pay for it, and then you can reset everything so you can start over with real data. But get in there, start playing around, and then maybe move on to the next lesson when you've gotten a little bit familiar with these areas that I've just gone through real quick for you here in this lovely video introducing you to 17 hats. As always, I hope you had some fun and learned something along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. As you've seen, this is one of the few products out there, perhaps, where you're going to do minimal setup because a lot of the stuff that you normally might think of as setup are going to be things you're going to do along the way as you get into a specific workflow that you're creating. And one of the first things you're going to need to do before you're really ready to even begin using the product and setting it up for that matter is going to be to outline your workflow. It's going to be tempting to just jump right into 17 hats and start building it. But as you're going to see, if you follow along in the next lesson, there are some important reasons why it is important to actually outline the workflow in something as simple as a Google Doc or a Word document so that it becomes very clear from that outline exactly what needs to be created in 17 Hats in order for your entire workflow to come together.